And we are back with another episode of Wicked 101. As always, I am your host, Defect, and I'm very, very excited to announce my guest for tonight is the legendary Insane Poetry. I had to go crazy on the air horns, man. This motherfucker is an OG. I mean, as OG as OG could be. Dude, like this motherfucker started back in 1988 rhyming, man. So there's going to be some crazy knowledge dropped tonight. I can only imagine, man. I, I, I got a lot of cool questions for him, and uh, I can't really, I, I can't wait to dive into this shit, man. Um, what can you say about fucking insane poetry, man? I mean, he's been around for so long, man. He, he's, he's worked with so many big artists. He's dropped a ton of music, man. Like, I've been exploring this catalog uh, a little deeper, and uh, holy shit, man. Like, that motherfucker, he's got some bangers, man. Some motherfucking bangers. You know what I'm saying? Look, we coming to you live and direct from an abandoned school in Detroit. If you ain't, if you ain't seen the show before, here's what's going down. Wicked 101 is all about schooling you on the history of the wicked shit, man. You know? Because, uh... There's a, there's a lot of history there that I don't want to get lost in the sauce. And insane poetry is a big, big part of uh, the underground wicked shit history. So I'm really, really excited to have him on the show tonight. We're going to take some calls a little bit later. Um, starting out, we're just going to... Uh, here's, what we're, here's what we're going to do. I think I think we got him on the line now. Uh, I, I'm here. Are we, do we got him on the line? Okay, they're telling me we got him on the line. Uh, so I'm going to make sure he's ready to go. We're going to play... Um, we're gonna play a, a video uh, real quick. You feel me? We're gonna play. Uh, I forget which one I got queued up here, but we are gonna play a video, and then we're gonna come back with insane poetry. We got him live on the uh, on the TV over here, man, and uh, he's coming in live via Skype. So I'm gonna quit rambling. We're gonna play this video, and uh, we'll be right back with insane poetry on Wicked 101. Share this motherfucker. Tell your friends, man. God damn it. Killing it out here. We are back on Wicked 101. I see you, but we don't hear you yet. Or no, I wait. We hear you. We hear you, but I don't see. You. Hold on. We'll just get. You know what, man? I'm I'm working on like 12 things. There we go. There we go. Now we see him. What up, man? How you what living up, tonight, bro? What's good? Look, I'm man. I'm good, man. I love that shirt you're wearing. Oh hell that's, yeah, man. That's what my. That's one of my favorite IP joints too, man. That that one's the, my one of my favorite ones. Look, I had to represent, man. You know how we do. Yes, sir. What's going down, man? How you feeling tonight, man? What's uh, what's what's? Man, I'm, I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm in the lab. You know, that's always uh, always the you know the safe haven, man. That's the creative spot. So yeah, I, I'm 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 good. A lot of things popping off and everything like that. So there's a lot of things lately have been uh very positive. Fuck yeah, man. Very positive. You, you are the grind king, man. Like, you, you've been doing this so fucking long, man. Like, how, how do you stay motivated to keep grinding, man? Like, what what is the driving force behind Insane Poetry? I think, bro, I just, I never, I kind of, you know, when I do a project or whatever, I feel like I don't live in the project after I'm done with it. You know what I mean? I, it's... It, it goes for whatever time it goes, and I'm on to the next thought process or the next thing. And it's just, just with the creative process of music making and stuff like that. Um, the actual grind, I love doing it. I mean, you know, it's now obviously it's a, it's a source of income. It's and but at the same time, it's just it's something I've probably done since I've slid out the womb. So you know, right. I feel like I was. Earth in that I, I always tell people I felt like I slid out the birth canal of music, you know. So, right, that's real shit. I mean, basically, I mean, you've been doing this since I was fucking before I was even in kindergarten. I think. I mean, holy shit, yeah. that's crazy yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you grew up uh, in Los Angeles, is that right? Or you were you were at least born yes, in sir. Los Angeles, right? Yeah, uh, Cer Cerritos, California, to, 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 to bring it, you know, to get it to a. Uh, a um specific you know closer element. yeah specific and i went to cerritos high school and uh out there um 
Yeah, man. Uh, Cerritos High School, California. That was like on the outskirts of Los Angeles, right a borderline of Orange County. So um, we got, we probably we pretty much got hip hop through radio stations. One of a popular radio station out there by the name of KDAY, and um, you know that's how I got, you know, really got to hear it on on radio on a, on the underground level, actually. And you know, I did I did a little research and on your Wikipedia page it says that you actually yes, were, were a disc jockey there for a while. Is that right? Uh yes, um a mix master actually. Oh, I okay. used to DJ at one time, yeah. And that I would, DJ'd at one time. That that was before you started rapping? Yeah, real, for real. Before I started rapping, I was a DJ. Yep. So how how did you what what made what made you pick up the mic? I guess is what I'm getting at, man. Like, what what? How did you transition from, uh, you know, radio DJ to or mix master to, uh, you know, to the to the mic? Okay, the well, mic. you know, um, actually, I actually had did a a, a, uh, a contest. I always I was always into to writing. I just never put it together. Um, I saw one of my homeboys at school. He, he's an old school dude by the name. Uh, um, um, I can't think of it. Uh, Jesus Christ! Right, right on my name. It, it just he just Shane the Madman. Okay, his name is Shane the Madman, and there's this dude from the East Coast. Right, he he would come to our school and he battled everybody. And he was an East Coast dude. He had the uh, the East Coast lingo. Everything was easy. This and that. And so he battled my, my dude at school and he had those kind of uh, kid and play type rhymes at one time and he got served in front of everybody. Right. And so the next next week, dude came back to battle again, the same dude, and he had changed his format into this horror thing. And um, it was me and this other dude that actually adapted it all together. We all really did get it together. He, he murdered the dude with the style. And it was like, that's what my family was into. You know, even when I was a kid, they watched that shit. So that's how I actually got into horror, horror, you know, just horror movies and stuff like that. Right. Um, I didn't I didn't start off actually rapping horror, horror core to begin with, to be real honest with you. Right. You know, I, I did DJ for a little bit. I had some DJ fame with with the radio station out there. KDAY, shout out to Greg Mack. A lot of the, um, a lot of your uh, certain certain artists that uh was DJs for big artists like Tone Loke, um, DJ uh, M Walk, he was uh part of that. Um, DJ Joe Cooley, Rodney O. Joe Cooley, who you know who I was rolling with. Uh, DJ Bobcat was uh with LL Cool J. They all came from this this group of DJs, or, and I was more of a turntablist, and we were called K Day Mix Masters, and you know, and um. What happened was I always liked to rap. I just never got the chance to explore that because DJs, I think, was the bigger thing at the time on the West Coast. You, you, it was, right. it was a, it was just a different, it was a different, different time, time at yeah. that moment. I guess I don't know. But what happened? How I got to that transition was I was in at a at a uh, at a show I was DJing and it was a a, a, a D, or it was a rap battle. And I said, well, hell, why don't I just get into it? You know, what the hell? Let me give it a I shot. I ended up getting in and winning. Oh, you got, you won the, that first rap battle. Yeah, I, run my, I, I, I won my first rap battle. I always knew I could do it. I always knew, I just didn't know that. What, 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 made, me, what made me go from DJing to rapping was that night because everybody that was there was there for the dude that was they knew. Right. And he lost to me and that was his fans. <laughs> right. So they, you know, and he wasn't bad, bro. So it let me know that it, it let me know I had something. Right. So it, it really, it, you know, so I, I started honing in with that. So uh, that was like early, early, you know, way early, way before I met uh, some of the guys that's, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see in my bio there. <laughs> Yeah, DJ streaks and the MDs and stuff like that. So, so you started out kind of basically solo, uh, doing doing yeah. like freestyle battles and stuff. Then, right? 
Um, uh, or, or is that just kind of a one-time thing that? You know, you know that was that was something that um, I wouldn't say that I wouldn't call it was a one-time thing. It was like because we would go everywhere and just rap because how I met MD was through some other dudes it's through Shakespeare actually is how I met is Shakespeare and MD was from Chicago they happened to be at Disneyland and they brought they had another dude that was um, from Brooklyn or from Flatbush Brooklyn it was all there and they just start rapping and I just happened to walk up on them and I'm like you know let me figure out let me see who who they are these two got the battle and me and old dude me and Shakespeare got the battle and we felt like we rapped more or less like the same and we all ended up kicking it and and everything blossomed from there but you know uh basically the, from my origination of it yeah it was solo and then uh correct me if i'm wrong before you did uh insane poetry uh you had a group called his majesty is that right and, uh, that, is, that is right. That is correct. That is correct. And and you, uh, who all was who all was in that group with you? Uh, His Majesty, me and uh, Shakespeare, the one man riot. That's that's my man's right there. This is a. Uh, I'll explain Shakespeare. I, I I have to. Shakespeare to me, he looked like the Kwame niggas. Back in the day, with the with the with the flat top and the polka dots, he right. was a nigga that that he he did house music. He liked house shit, right? Right. But he sound LL like he, he, right. his throat, and he would he was a he was a, he was like a pit bull on a mic, right? And that's and he's the one that had me kind of like we kind of crafted each other. Well, he crafted me. He made there's no question about it. He had this this way of delivery, and he always taught it. He taught me it was like from the diaphragm. And you had a voice, so if you could really use that to your benefit, you know. Well, you obviously I was young, but we were just rapping without mics and going and battling people. We didn't care, right? And kind of honing your craft, so to speak. Exactly. We were hungry. We was hungry, man. You know, you see, you you know, you watch the MTVs back in the day, yo MTV raps and all that stuff like that. You was, you know, we was hungry kids, bro, trying to trying to get it in, you know, by all means, because. I sacrificed a lot of shit even back then to start even to get known on the West Coast because I, I, not on, on West Coast was hard because it was hard to even get known. Period. Period. If you was from the West Coast, getting love, you know, across, you know, nationwide. Right. It wasn't fucking with the West Coast like that. Right. So uh, it was just you and Shakespeare and, and His Majesty then. And yeah, that's, I, that's who it was at the time. Yeah. And you, uh, what was the? Um, was there was there a full release for that, or was it uh, was it just some singles, or like what 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 happened with that? Um, we had we had some singles, definitely. Um, it was a twelve inch single we dropped at a at a from a swap meet in in uh, Southern California called uh, Norwalk Indoor. Um, we had dropped the record out of there, and uh, it was um, a little thing we pressed up. And it was a uh, nine millimeter and a song called Crushing Drums. But we ended up redoing it, going to Chicago. And and we uh, laced it there, there. And then we got it, when we came back to California, we ended up getting a deal with Egyptian Lover Records and we released Armed and Dangerous after that. But yeah, uh, Crushing Drums was actually our friend nine millimeter with a 13 clip. That was our own thing we did up out of uh, Norwalk Endo. That we that we it originated from there, and then we took it and uh, went to Chicago, crafted that, and that's what got everything started from there. Me and Shakespeare went and uh, did a deal with uh, with Egyptian uh, Egyptian Lover Records at the time, or Egyptian Empire Records, right. That's how, you know, I, I learned about Rodney L. Joe Cooley. Egyptian was a, a, used to be a DJ too. So he went from DJing to becoming, you know, to owning his own label, obviously. And, right. And, uh, and so forth. Hey, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but you, you, uh, no. you keep, uh, like when you, when you sit up forward, your, your head kind of gets cut off there. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there, okay. there, there you go. All right. Order. Yeah. I was, I was right, like, order. I was like, man, I don't, does he realize his eyes are getting cut off, man? I don't know. But that, that's, that's better. No, no. As well. Okay, we're we're good. So, uh, so His Majesty kind of um, what what happened after that? Like, you guys, what? Why isn't His Majesty still kicking it today? Like, what's what's the story behind well, that? You know, 
You know, um, it was, it's funny because me and his style was kind of technically like, you know, we wanted to craft it Run DMC with an LL flavor to it, more aggressive up front in your face type of deal. Running them were more party. We were more aggressive, less less you know kill the stage, bring that aggression type of shit to the stage. Right. Um, I started like I said, I was in a horror movie, so I w- I went one way and he kind of went another way. I mean, it was it was almost natural progression. It's funny because. Shakespeare is a, is a uh, is, has his own ministry, is doing really well for himself. He's doing um, a lot of good things for his, you know, for everywhere around the community and stuff like that. Salute to Shakespeare uh, uh, and everything he's been doing in his life and, and his family, and they're all blessed in music. So I got nothing but love for that guy. That guy t- is part of the reason why I'm even able to sit here and do it for as long as I do, because he's still out strong doing it. He just got a different path than I do. Right, 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 right. Just doing doing something totally different. Um, right, right. So, so then it kind of evolved into insane poetry. And originally, it wasn't just you by yourself, right? Like originally, there, there was a bit more of a lineup. Is that like how? how... No, that's that. Not actually, it started off being me because. Um, okay. The actual part of the name derived from another artist that was with Roddy O. Joe Cooley. His name was General Jeff. He, he just kept saying, he's like, because I was going by a name, the name Drew Rock at the time, uh, a, a graffiti name, because I got I used to be into graffiti art. And uh, I, and uh, he, he just liked the way I rap. He said, man, you got insane poetry. And I'm like, that's dope, that's dope. And I instead of me, because I had my boys with me, instead of me saying, this is insane poetry, me alone, I'll say this is insane poetry. I'll I'll bring you two in, and it'll be insane poetry because I don't want to do it without you guys. But right. basically, the whole idea was derived from this man, and then the idea of the record was derived from my uh, my head. And I brought these people in to to give it that that extra. The extra. But really, that that's pr- that's probably why. Um, at the beginning, you do see three people because it really, I mean, DJ Street plays his, played his part, MD does play his part. The, it's, it was what made the Grim Reality album and presentation work. I believe I would never take anything from that. What, uh, the, so the first single was uh, 12 Strokes to Midnight, right? Uh, for Insane Poetry, no. The first, uh, the 12 Strokes to Midnight actually, well, my, my jumping, I'm jumping around, ain't I? It was, yeah. <laughs> Technically, that was a His, His Majesty record. Okay, all right. Technically, that was a His Majesty record. Got you. Um, so, so Grim Reality. Let's let's talk about that for a little bit. Um, I mean, it's an underground classic, obviously. You know, what, what can I say about that? I mean, it speaks for itself. It it has that gritty vibe from back in the early 90s you know what i mean like that shit that was coming out of the west coast it has that vibe but then it's got you just these murderous raps over it you know what i mean like it's just it's so dope um what uh how are you with with, with, with an album that was like so different like that how were you guys able to get like people behind it and get the backing that you got on that album because it went on to sell what 35,000 copies something like that or maybe even more than that all of a sudden done. um Origi- originally well okay that there's here's the thing is that the timing of of how sound scan was doing things back in the day and and uh that record there was a lot of records that weren't counted a lot of records that weren't counted but um like hand to hand sales and shit like show, yeah, shows. Um, it was more the record. The, the record sold more upwards towards the seventy grand range, the seventy k range, okay. which which is cool. I, I I I know the facts behind it, so I, it's cool. Whatever the numbers are to me, I really don't really don't trip that at at all. Right. Um, um, but it was a it was a different record, and, and they didn't know how to get behind it the right way. I'm mean, just going to be honest with you. Shout out to Nasty Mix for even doing it, but they is they had never heard anything like it because we sent them How You Gonna Reason with a Psycho and they were already getting a lot of 
flack from that you know, from different college outlets that they were getting love for Sir Mix a lot from. They were getting love from, you know, some of their other artists from. But they were, you know, even Rodney O and Joe Cooley was getting love through those outlets. But when they dropped How You Gonna Reason with a Psycho, those outlets were very not happy with the content. So Right. <laughs> um, but it, they they liked the record. But when we sent them the album and told them to turn off the lights and listen to the album top to bottom. They didn't know what to do with the record. From that moment, I knew the record wasn't gonna get the proper Rollout. what it what it supposed to get. But you know, here we are, you know, over 25 years later, and I'm still existing. And that record is the reason, you know, is the is the is the you know the genesis of it. So I, I'm 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 very happy about it. But they didn't. I wish they would have. You know, they would have had more positive energy behind it but it's kind of hard when when something is so against the grain is like maybe we don't have the, the uh the budget for that you know and i understand the business end of it and everything now right right you know I, they just probably didn't have the budget to actually push that vision right <clears throat> and especially if you were getting backlash right off the top right like we don't even get the record out and we're already getting flack for this right yeah right right yeah, I mean, I can see that for sure. Um, so my so my, my other thought is, you know, you got, um, you know, I grew up in Michigan, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, specifically mid-Michigan, I was I was like an hour north of Saginaw, two and a half hours north of Detroit, you know what I mean? And um, okay. I found the wicked shit like in 1995, you know, I was like probably 13 or some shit, you know? And uh, okay. I started looking for groups you know, uh, like once I found ICP and Twisted, you know, and the House of Crazies and all that, I started just looking for groups, and um, it's 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 crazy, man, because it was so saturated in Michigan, you know, that I didn't even I I didn't even get to to insane poetry. I'm being real with you, like like it was um, like it, I never found it, you know, just as a as a as a teenager in Michigan, you know what I mean? But you were out there doing shit. And there was a whole other scene going on. My, my point is, like, in Michigan, it was oversaturated with ICP, Esham, House of Crazy, Simpkin Heights. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was so much yeah. going on that I probably didn't even get to all the shit that was going on in Michigan. You know what I mean? Let alone some of this other shit when I was when I was still a kid. So I didn't I didn't start fucking with you until you know probably the 2000s, like 2003 and shit. You know what I mean? Um, around the Faith right, of Chaos right. era, you know what I mean? When, uh, Faith I was, of Chaos I, era. When I was starting out, you know, my career, you know what I mean? And uh, I remember seeing you at um, the gathering, I think it was 2007. And, uh, 2000, it was, I, I think it was 2008. Was it 2008? I, I don't know. I, don't, I might have the dates either, wrong. Either way, yeah, the, I, yeah. the, the point is... Either I, one, either one. I, I, I think I went up uh, a couple sets before you, maybe a day before. I don't remember the specifics, but all I remember is you went up there, and I, I will never forget you rocking uh, How You Gonna Reason With a Psycho. That was just like, holy shit, this dude is the truth, man. Like, and and I guess, I don't, I don't I know I'm rambling here, but my, my point is, like, I had to, I was always like, man, I need to check out this dude's catalog. You know what I mean? Like, I earmarked it. Like, that. this is something I need to do. And, uh, well, fuck it, man. Yeah, I mean, and then, and then I, I, I heard you on the, uh, the KGP album, you know? Uh, and I was like, fuck, I need to check out this dude's catalog. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like, on and on. And I just never got to it until really recently where I, I really dived in. And I was like, oh my God, dude, there's just, there's just so much shit, man. So, um, I guess my point is to get to the question that I'm, 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 I'm trying to get to is, Esham was doing his thing, ICP was doing their thing, everybody was doing their thing. How, how do you think that this? I mean, did you find Esham and stuff before you started going in that darker direction, or were you were you kind of just doing it yourself, and um, basically started the genre? West Coast style, you know what I mean? Like I, like when I think about the Wicked, oh, yeah. I, I think I think of Michigan, oh, no you question. know what I mean? No question about it. I hadn't heard of Esham when I was doing my thing at all. Right. I hadn't heard of Esham, Brother Lynch. I hadn't heard of anybody. It was just I was doing that shit from high school. This is pretty much that's that was the Taylor style. I kind of 
channeled it down a little bit because a certain yeah, I was rapping with another artist that wasn't really doing it like that. So we, you know, we had that bout where we didn't do it, but I, I, I went heavily into it right after me and him went opposite directions. Right. So I hadn't heard, and I hadn't heard anybody do it to be honest with you. Do you think? Do you That's think not just, it didn't exist? I just hadn't heard it. Right, right. That's exactly what I'm talking about, though. It's like, you know, locationally, like, we didn't have the fucking internet to, like, oh, let me see what Insane Poetry is all about. You know what I'm saying? It just wasn't there. You know, the infrastructure right, right, to, cool. like, to, you know. It, it, so my, my point is pre-internet. How in the fuck do you think uh, that around the same time period this genre kind of evolved in its own way, like, in two different directions? You know what I'm saying? Like, how, do, you, do you think right. it was a sign of the times uh, of what was going on? In the in the hood, I guess you know, because like you know, uh, or, or do you think that it uh, you, there was some other reason why it was able to be come into fruition in two different locations uh, um, at, the, at the same time? You know, I think uh, I know it's a deep know, and it's, long it's, question. It's, it's, a, it's a sort of level. Yeah, I think I think horrorcore is a sort of level of. Uh, or even before the term horrorcore was invented, shout out to the Flatliners because they deserve all the credit for that. But I just think that that mentality of writing dark stuff and using horror-themed uh, attributes probably, for me, it attributed back to my my mom and them love horror. They, they would take us to drive-ins. I saw them as a fucking kid when, you know, you had the fuck, when I was a, a baby, I, not a baby, but a young boy with pajamas on with the little slick bottoms the onesies we'd be sitting there and we'd watch that shit at the drive-ins with them they had no problem with us doing that so right. i've been i've been doing that for that long of time the, i would believe that people that i've met probably just had the same attraction to the shit you know and, and the you know the king Cordys and the and the Eshams, like Esham, his shit is on a whole different level than anybody else's i've ever heard absolutely you know? and absolutely uh, just like Lynch's, I believe I, I just do it different than everybody. I, I I guess we all have our own little twist to it, you know. Oh, but right. I, I will, you know, I, I hadn't heard of those guys when, when I was doing it, but I was still developing style, so I could never say, hey, you know, um, my style was that. My I, I think I, I think some artists were really dope when I first heard them. I don't know how they first started off. I know when I did, I wasn't as sharp. Or, I wasn't as sharp as, as on my delivery and pen as I am now. I know that. I can hear that when some of the shit you're playing. I'm like, oh, maybe I could have done this a little bit better. Yeah, I, we all I'm evolved, though. I'm always critical, and that's probably another thing that keeps me going fresh in it because I'm super critical about my shit all the time. You always got to sharpen the saw, man. You know, and uh, you know, keep evolving because you, you don't ever want to put out the same record twice. You know what I mean? No. Oh, no. And and you haven't. I mean, so uh, speaking of which, moving on to like the next stage, you know, uh, Black Plague was the next record, right? After after Very right, Reality. Right. Yes, yes, sir. What um, it took? Uh, what was it like four years for that album to come out after Grim Reality? Is that roundabout? My I, look, man. My my specifics are wrong, but the the thing is, man, I am a student of my. Of my own class, man. I'm, I'm a student of my own class. No, no, no worries. No worries at all, man. Uh, not, oh, uh, October 92 was the grim reality, and I think 94 was the original Black Plague. Now, as far as it hitting any market, I think we put it out on, on, on Grim Reality Entertainment. Me and JP put that out like years later, but the original version of that record was done two years after Grim Reality. Gotcha. Okay. Um, why do you think it sounded so different? I mean, obviously you want to do something different, but it, uh, how did you guys take it to that next level and and, and evolve in the way that it, it did? Do you have any insight to that were you were you even uh did you have your hand in the production you know of, of of these records or were you just mc you know okay well the first album actually grim reality i actually produced 98 percent of it okay uh two two of the tracks were produced by joe cooley shout out to you joe cooley um uh, joe cooley and shout out to my dudes kmc who are 
you know, one of the originators from the West Coast also. They were the first artists who did horror, horror style of music or horror style of concept rap and their stuff that got a major deal. They, they got a deal on Capitol. And that was before I even got my deal. So, yeah, they, they actually... Well, I, shout out to them, brothers. Uh, Rock, TDOG, Poison Ivy. Had to give them a huge shout out. And um, But um, as you were saying again, I'm sorry. I, got, I just got caught up in that thought process. No, I was just talking about why, why it was uh, <laughs> so different, you know, and like... Uh you know, what the, what the production was, you know, what it was involved in the production of it. And, you know, uh, you know, just how, just how the music evolved over time. You know what I mean? Just it's basically, it's, it's more of a, just a, a talking point than a question specifically, I guess, you know, for, for me, well, the first album, like I said, I did 98% of it and I like what I was doing at that time, but coming from the West coast, I was actually looking for more of a sound that was going to get my shit heard more on an expanded level. So I started searching, seeking out, because I, I wasn't able to make those type of tracks. I can make backpack sound and boom bap music all day, but I couldn't make that that sound that I was looking for. Right. So um, I just started finding other art, uh, other producers that, that just happened to be doing the same thing. A shout out to uh, uh, my boy Lumberjack. Uh, Lumberjack actually produced. Uh, you don't, uh, not, you don't hear me though. But um, oh, I want to it. Mm, I have to think about it right now. But it was, it was on the uh, best of album. Also, I had it on a B side of a Rodney on Joe Cooley song too. You better ask somebody. That's it. That's the track. I've done so many, so much music, bro. Is like, <laughs> I'm so like, I'm already, I'm just so far thinking of what the new shit I'm yeah, doing right yeah, now. Yeah. It's so hard to like on the fly remember this shit. That's why. That's but, why yeah. I'm trying to keep this history alive, man. Because the the artists themselves are forgetting the shit. You know what I mean? So right. No, no, that's that's true shit. That's that's hella. That's hey, man. I appreciate that shit. But look, real shit. Look, shout man. Out to, shout out to you, Matt and M and E. Word, word. Fuck yeah, man. I mean, M and E's killing it, man. Uh, I, I think it's the shit that. You know, they, they've given me this platform to school their fan base, essentially, you know, uh, right. because the thing right, is, sure. the thing is, man, like, you know, I, I look at like um, guys like me that were there back in the 90s that know, you know, but I don't, I don't know all your history because I was in Michigan, you know, following the history going on. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, right, right. I, I like I said, I'm, I'm a student of my own class and uh, I, I love hearing about this shit. Like Netflix had that. uh evolution of hip-hop or whatever it was I, I, I ate that shit up man just listen to all these stories and and uh it's just specifically the wicked shit like I, I really uh i really love hearing this so hey man whatever whatever you can divulge uh is that the right word you know to, to school these motherfuckers you know that that's what it's about so. <laughs> um, real real shit man so um okay so i don't want to i don't want to stick on any one topic too long you know but um that album you, you had uh how how was the the second album received you said you, you did about seventy thousand on the first album how was the second album received like was it were they more welcoming to it by that well, time here's the thing. it was later in the no see that's the whole thing um the reason why the second album was done and never put out there was a whole bunch of a lot of things a lot of things started to, to change back in those days um i went from doing it solo to actually getting going going back and forth with street shit <laughs> it was like it really took a toll on producing rec getting the record out because there was no financial support right after that yeah, I mean seven, you gotta think this label had done I don't know how much how many records they sold with uh, Sir Mix a lot it's fucking ridiculous in my mind. right or on a sales, stupid. you know, just uh, stupid money. Un unfortunately, man, you know, they didn't know what to do my, with my record. I didn't move enough units for that to be even a situation. So that narrative never went any further. So I tried going through other sources. The Black Plague album actually went through, um, first of all, it went through React Records which was a, a, a record label that Rodney O had, had had found 
and was working with the guy that ran the label. His wife actually was a Bond lady from the uh, James Bond movies. Right. She was an actual from uh, was it Roger? Moore? No, not not Roger Moore. Who's the uh, one before Roger? Uh, Sean Connery. Yes. Right. So she played in a few of a few of his movies, but her husband actually owned this company. Okay. Her son used to Chevrolet commercials and stuff like that. So he he had Luke, and he didn't know what to do with us either. But we were working on this record through his uh through his record label. We actually got the record done, and through scenarios that just didn't work out contractual wise, we parted ways. But we had to we got to keep the masters on. Nice. So up, up past that point, you're, we're putting it out with low, low, low budgeting. And right. so obviously without a platform, we already know now without certain platforms, you're just not heard no matter how dope you are. Right. For sure. Um, okay. So in that same time period, you know, you, uh, I, I believe that was around the same time that, um, you started fucking with vanilla ice, right? Uh, Wait, tell, tell me that story like how did that come about and um you know uh i know that uh okas was originally um was that hard to swallow uh and then it came out on faith and chaos later on without vanilla ice am i am i, am I saying this right um like just tell me that story like i want i want to i want to hear all, all that you know i think that's interesting all right, all right, let's start off. Uh, shout out to Vanilla Eyes, regardless, uh, Robert Van Winkle. I'm going to say this to, to even kick this off. Without Robert Van Winkle's name attached to this, there's no, there's really not a lot of energy involved around it. But I'll tell you, this is how I ended up having any kind of you know, uh, work with uh, Vanilla Eyes to be able to work with the guy. Um, we... I was I was living with Rodney O and Joe Cooley on the West Coast, and we were going to 7-Eleven a lot. Just right down the street, we we're staying in the Valley, uh, San Fernando Valley. Just walking up the street, and we decided to go check out the magazine section, and we pull up to see what the the artists are doing. You know, West it's West Coast, how all that shit, you're just into that shit at the time. And we read Rodney O, or we we read this article on Vanilla Ice saying his favorite rapper is Rodney O and Joe Cooley. And he started naming off songs. We're like, oh shit. He's saying this in his magazine. So Rodney got at his management, which was Tommy Kwan, told him, hey, you know, we'd like to work with you guys in the future. And they were like really down with it right off the top. So they ended up flying us out to work on a Vanilla Ice album called... Uh, the mind blowing when he had the the blonde dreads or whatever. It was like his um, second I, or third album. Second, it's third album. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it was after the Ninja Turtle album or whatever. Right. If, they, if you want to consider that an album, that was a motion picture soundtrack right, or whatever. Right. It was after for that, that movie. Or, but I I would consider that's probably his second album, the mind blowing record. Okay. Because it was after Third Base had this. Okay. So basically, we get out there. Well, I don't know what, con what what negotiations were set up through through um, Rodney because Rodney was the business person. I, I actually had no clue. I'm just saying, oh, I get a chance to go out here and 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 write songs with this guy, and I, I'm you know I had no clue of the business end of it at all. So I let him handle that. So when we got out there to work, we ended up doing. I would think I wrote about ten songs, maybe even more, uh, to to that record. And what he did was, I wrote a song. He he would say the words, blah blah blah. Rodney would actually, or Rodney would orchestrate everything. Joe would do all the music, do all the beats. So I think ninety percent of that album was done by Joe Cooley. Although it may not show that in the credits, because like I said, we had nothing to do with the business end of that. Games fucked Although up like that, man. Credits. <laughs> I was in the studio, and I know how that shit went down. Right. Basically, that album was born, and obviously, certain things and concepts in that record, I don't think Vanilla Ice would ever had done on his own. I'm not saying that he might not have thought of the concept. I just think at the time he was getting attacked by. Various sources, 
but he was getting attacked by third base. Yeah. So and I, I took that personally. So when we got out there, that was my mission to like create shit to at least give him some firepower back. Like, fuck you. I can rap. I will get in that shit, you know, like that type shit. Cause they were super cocky on that bullshit. Right. So, and I, I kind of felt like they was just taking, you know, unnecessary shots at the kid. So, um, we wrote the record, man. And, um, a lot of things happened, uh, but it was an experience, man. It was an experience. I can't put it this way. I ended up working with an Elias for 10 years after that. So he must like how I got down. Right. Right. And you, so you, you, you wrote a lot of the shit for that record and you ended up on, um, I don't remember what record it was, but there was a track called freestyle that, uh, that freestyle. you were on, yeah. on the, on the that. bipolar album. That was, that was interesting. We, we recorded that record on the West coast. Actually. Um, we ended up um, in Malibu, California. He hits me up and he says, hey man, you know, I'm gonna call you one day here in the next few months. And uh, I don't know, I'm gonna send you some tracks right now. Can you write to these tracks? And this was some old, you know, some very metal sounding shit with the beats and shit. But I was like, it still had, it still had a hip hop flavor to it. Right. But it was just art. And I was like, yeah, I could write to this shit. But I'm like, the shit I would write to it, because at that point, I was really into writing dark shit. So I was like, I, I can write it, but I'm going to be writing some really aggressive shit. So I ended up doing a few songs, and I sent them back to him, and he was like, okay, I'm going to be in Malibu, California. I want you to come up. We're going to record these, blah, blah, blah. And we sure as hell, he gets there about five, six months later, uh, Ross Robinson, who's uh, the producer of of Corn's earlier shit, and um, I think uh, I think I know he had something to do with a lot of lot of that music back in the day. Um, Limp Biscuit type of a couple of uh, band members from Limp Biscuit, he was definitely fucking with. Uh, Ross Robinson had his hands in everything, pretty much, and he had his hands in his project, and. Uh, that was that was that was special, dude. Having that guy there, it was weird because we would go there and I'd have to write, looking over, and I was like in this Airbnb, looking over in the ocean, and you see fucking dolphins and whales and shit, and I'm writing to this angry ass music, looking at this serene <laughs> shit. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> right. It was fucking. Crazy. But then we drive up this hill, like all the way up this crazy ass hill to this cabin. But it was a it was a it was a fucking uh, it was a studio, bro. It was like super crazy they was serving food up in there it was it was pretty damn dope lenny kravitz was up in there it was it was pretty fucking dope i i just had a lot of pull back then bro had a lot of pull that record was uh fun to make that was a fun to make record but i actually got four joints on it and he asked me to come in and freestyle on that on one of the records and shit so that was my first appearance on one of uh, ice's shit actually right and then uh you did uh so tell me, okay, yes. yeah, tell me, tell me about OKS, and then we'll uh, we'll move on. Well, OKS really is where my um, it's funny because uh, my boy, shout out to Henry DJ Streak, uh, original member from Insane Poetry, um, he actually produced this track, and um, I wrote to it, and I had got flown out to go write some shit for Vanilla Ice, had nothing to do with the song at all, and uh, we had spent a couple of days in the studio and. He came over to my, my hotel room and I was playing the beat. And he was like, what the hell? He was just like bouncing his head. And I said, listen, and I start spitting the rap. I spit because I had two verses for the shit. So I spit OKS for him. And he was like, oh, man, shit, I got to have this on my album. I'm like, because I had worked with him prior and I know things weren't done the best way business wise. I said, I have to be on this record to let people know they won't believe that I fucked with you. Right, you know, so. Right. I have to be on this record, and um, so I, I wrote, I, I wrote both verses, but he interpolated the first verse the way he wanted it to, to fit him, fit his style, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the second verse, and then uh, and the rest is history from there. Um, I ended up because of I wasn't really too smart at the business end at the time. I was a little bitter about how it all played out. Right. So reason why henceforth you see, you hear the version on Faith and Chaos uh, with both my verses on it. Right. Here, it's, that's the original record. 
untouched. Right. You know, outside of maybe uh, yeah, outside of um, master. So you know, but things change when you learn the business. <laughs> right. Things right. change when you learn the business. Right. So um. So let's see. But that's how I learned. That's that's. How, hey, hey. Speaking of that though, I'm gonna tell you. I went to Dallas to go write that and and record that, bro. And we did that. And so Ice was so pl- pleased to have the record, right? He said, "Hey, do you know who ICP is?" Straight up. And I'm like, "Yeah, I heard of ICP. You know, I heard what, of." What, what, what year was this? Oh, shit. We lost you for a second there. And then my phone is. Just uh, somebody legalized and called. <laughs> right, right. So anyway, so what? what, what I, he you says, want? "Hey, man, ICP, ICP's playing down here downtown Dallas, man. You ain't got shit to do tonight. Let's. You want to go?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, why not?" I, I, I had heard about him, so we go. We go backstage. I meet Jay. I see Shaggy. We talk for a brief moment about, you know, I was explaining to him who I was and. And he's like, yeah, I remember you guys was on the, the cover with the straight jackets and shit, right? And I was like, yeah. And so that was a, that was a cool moment. But the, I didn't even know, bro. What, you, what see, year was that? I never heard their music, nothing. But I got to see it from backstage and all the the change and, and everything. And it was in Fago Armageddon. Shit was nuts, bro. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? That shit was crazy. What year was that that you met down <sighs> Wow, that's good. that's a good question, bro. That is a good question. <laughs> Trying to keep this history that? alive, man. Come on, uh, bro. Man, nine two thousand. It had to be in two thousand something, bro. Two either between two thousand and two thousand three, okay. something like that. All right, and. Uh... That's, that's... I hadn't I hadn't been to or seen anything or even listened to anything ICP related until Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice is the reason why I even had even heard their music. I knew who they were, but I hadn't heard their music. Wow. So you went to the show, you met them, and um, you got to see the the crazy antics behind the the scenes and how they put their show together, and it's like evolved. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a, it was it was a mad respect right off the top. I'm like, oh shit, this is another level of shit right here. Right. It was really dope, really dope. I was, it was, I, I didn't, I, I, I was about, I was a rapper that came up from a scene where you had to, you had to be able to rap to be able to, you know, get on. You couldn't get, they wouldn't even give you love if you couldn't rap. They were on an entertainment level, you know, like on, I hadn't seen no shit like that, you know, right. like the last thing I seen close to that was like, some run DMC LL Cool J at the at the Long Beach Amphitheater or at the sports arena, right. you know, it, that was huge. This is what I was watching. I'm just backstage of it. I was it was a trip, bro. It definitely was a, a eye opener for me. Yeah, and and you know it makes you when you see when you see that it makes you feel like fuck, man. I can't just walk out on the stage with a microphone anymore, you know, because but no, no, no. I'm, I'm stale, <laughs> you know. Like no, I don't know. Right. Once you once you see once you see that level of uh, you, you know, anyways. Um, so uh, so faith and chaos, uh, falling from grace, and it, you know, I don't want to like gloss over everything, but. Uh, is there anything uh, specific you could tell us about those albums that were, um, I mean, kind of a different time, you know, uh, different place? Yeah. Um, something that jumps out at you as, uh, you know, a talking point? Yeah, okay. Well, definitely. Uh, let's talk about, let's start with Faith and Chaos. Faith and Chaos to me was a record that uh, intrigued. I, I wanted to, I, I backed away from making a record like Grim Reality. Because some of the re- some of that record, um, a, a few of my what's a person I knew um, was really fond of that record, but he w- he was really volatile. He got into a scenario with the police, and and things got out a week prior to that that his favorite rap group was us, and you know, and uh, he ended up dying, being shot by the police. But um, I wanted to get away from that energy. But after dealing with certain things I was dealing with, I ended up coming back and doing that record uh, 
uh, faith and chaos because I was like, I lived a lot of uh, that that ten years. It was a ten year gap, and I was into I was into some street shit. It's just, just California was what it, you know. I it just what it was, you know. I, I'm not I'm, I'm I never was gang banging, but I was around fools that did. So that's just what it was. Right. So it's like once I lost the deals, I'm you know, and I'm riding with my my dude was a goon. So it's like, that's how he operated. We all operated like that. Yeah. We always wrote music. We always was in the lab doing something. But as far as having a budget to be seen and heard, it was strictly out of our pocket. We were still trying to fish for a deal. So it was 10 years of all that. So once I got to Faith in Chaos, I was thinking, man, I need to do another record like Grim Reality. But like now, at the time 9-11 had happened, I had had kids. You know, a lot of things in my life changed drastically. So yeah. that's why you get the the Coolio song, um, and, and and all these different, you know, those type of records and stuff like that. Um, Faith and Chaos was a record that actually got Scum to listen to me. Not Grim Reality. Scum's favorite record is Grim, is Faith and Chaos. That's what brought his attention to me. And um, it's crazy uh, how that how that pans out later in the process. And fall and Falling from Grace. These records were produced solely by JP. I had made, met JP years prior, and he was working at a, a record record label store. And I was coming in. I was looking for, I think, Alcoholics. I was looking for um, a record there. And then I asked him, did he have any of my records? And he 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 knew where I was or something like that. And we just got to talking. He said he did beats, and he had worked with a, with another artist out of Atlanta. And uh, and it just, that never panned out. So he was back in California working, and it, and he started sending me beats. Took a long time for us to gel on something, but we started working together. And he's the actual producer behind um, um, behind Faith and Chaos. I might have done. I, he he done ninety percent of that outside of uh, Henry, outside of DJ Streaks OKS. Uh, that Faith and Chaos was all done by by him and Henry. I, him and him and DJ Street. So and then from there, uh, uh, Falling from Grace was done strictly by, by uh, <coughs> excuse me, by uh, by JP the Hustle. So right. the records and the the, temp, the the thought, the, the idealism changed. The, you know, the maturity changed. The styles changed. The, the you know, my concepts was different. I was I was I was backing away from certain certain energies. I was trying to get. Uh, you know, I was just, you know, we just evolved, you know. Right. I, I was still trying to. I was, I was reading a lot. I was, I was um, increasing my skill set level, you know. Right. So, and a lot of times, you know, that that's when you're when you're when you're starting from the bottom with no platform, you know, people don't know you have even records out. I I, I still have people to this day on that page. So I, I'm not mad. I I do it because I like to do it. Right. Now you you mentioned uh, Coolio, and I remember uh, watching an interview with you. You talked about uh, how that came about, the track that you did with Coolio. Uh, for the people that haven't seen that, what, can you tell that story real quick? Yeah, man, I was in a studio. I was like, I hadn't been uh, in a in a lab. I, uh, for those who don't know, I mean, I was a fucking alcoholic, like for real, hardcore for years, my, a long, long time. And one of the lows I had getting back into music. Uh, shout out to M Boogie for hanging out with me and hanging in there with me at this time. I was really going through one of these depression periods. At that time, I didn't know it was depression. It just was. I, I was drinking a lot and I wasn't doing anything music. My guy, Poison Ivy from KMC, was like, I'm recording all the time, bro. You need to come out here. I'm scooping you up. Uh, I'm going to take you to the studio. I want to, you know, I just want you to hear some shit. Just get in a vibe with me. So we go up to uh, our Studio D out in. Um, uh, in a valley, we go, and um, it was a place we were we frequently went to. And he plays some beats and stuff like that. And, you know, we rocking out. I'm drinking, smoking, and he's like, "Man, I gotta have you on a song, bro. I just, I got you out here to really record you." I'm like, "Oh shit, all right." But I had I had been staying on my pen because I was going through some shit. I was I was still on my pen, and I had wrote this song over a Jay Z beat, you know, called "Life's a Gamble," and I knew it by heart. I could just spit it right on the spot. And he played this beat and uh, just the song you just played earlier. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I was in the studio with my eyes closed, spitting the fucking verse. And sure as hell, when I wake, when I open my eyes, 
Coolio's knocking on the studio window like, I got a hook for that shit. I got a hook for that shit, my dude. He was he happened to be next door recording, and the, and the dude that was doing the beat knew him. He's like, hey, bro, come just come through real quick. And he came and he heard me spitting. He was like, I don't know who the fuck this dude is, but this is dope, and I, I right. got a hook right here. And I'm like, oh, hell yeah, go in there. And he went in there, laid this shit down, and it was just all organic, just like that, man. That's so fucking crazy and cool at the same time, man. That that, that, that yeah, is crazy. So that's a mind blowing story. Like just you just sit there rocking out. There's Coolio, probably with his braids and shit, just knocking on the glass. Yeah, yeah, no, it's real, bro. It's oh real, my bro. god, it's crazy. dude. It was, it was, like, it was legit. fuck it was yeah, legit. you could get in that booth, man. Shit. Yeah, it was legit. That's dope. Yeah, he was man. feeling it that much, and I was feeling it because the words was real as fuck. You know what I'm saying? I was going through some shit. And that song, it just, the beat, it, it made me spit that verse. And I was like, oh, shit, this is perfect. And it, it, it actually got me back into recording even more. Because I was, you know, I was going through it. 9-11 happened, had a kid. I was living with, you know, living in a, in a scenario, didn't think the music was going anywhere. Uh, it just, it just, what it, it, it was, it was, what it, it was what it was at the time. I was very depressed, actually. Right. right. Well, I'm glad to see you got out of that, man. You know, oh, yeah. and now, oh. now, now you're uh, now you're killing it on LSP. Um, but uh, so what was after that kind of era, man? You ended up doing the the, the, the album with Sutter Kane, right? How did that, how did all that come about? Yes. Sutter Kane had me at a weird time because I had got you know I really really loved doing that record with with Vanilla Ice. Right. I love the energy behind it. I love working with uh with um uh with um with the producer at the time. Um, I, I just love the energy behind that whole how, how songs was crafted out of that. And I really wanted to, I wish I could do it. I was like, I wonder if I could have got Ross Robinson to make me a track, but I could do my angry, aggressive shit over it, right? right. And I'm like, yeah, this is going to be dope. You know, that would be dope. But I just said, forget about it. And one, I'm at, at a job site one year, and... One of my boys hit me up. He said, man, I need you to check out this dude when you come over to my house. Um, he, he, My man passed away right now. Shout out to him. Um, he's, he's, you know, he brought me over. He was like, listen to this shit, man. This dude is named Sutter Kane. He's like, watch his videos. He's got a lot of crazy shit in his video. And it was like, the music was angry as fuck. But he rapping, but it's all this crazy snuff shit going on in it, right? right? And we we're like, I'm like, oh shit, this is dope. The visual was dope, right? What he's saying is, what he's saying is cool, but his the music sound is what I was really attracted to, right? But I never thought I'd get, I'd fuck with the dude, never, yeah. I never even thought. It wasn't even a thought process. I'm at a job one day, I look at an email, and it's because it, it was back in the MySpace days. Yeah, I hit the e uh, hit the email. He's in my inbox saying, "Hey man, you know I like your voice. You know I'd like to work with you. Do a single." And we did a single. A single ended up turning into an album, you know. And that there was Sutter Kane. I, it's crazy because we like the same things. And I was in a I was in a stage where I was really angry about a lot of shit, a lot of shit. And he flew me out there. We I did uh, a jihad here in Cali. And then I flew out to South Carolina to record the rest of the album. I knocked out my parts in three days. Wow. Oh, that wow. <laughs> That's real shit. We nonstop on that record. That's crazy, man. Ill-advised, uh, by the way, to, <laughs> to do an album that quick, but damn. Way, way ill-advised. Yeah, but that's the shit, man. Um, that, that album was like uh, kind of more metal and shit, right? Like it had... Uh, like yes, a, lot of, a lot of guitars and shit. Who played all that shit? Was that him playing that or? No, no, no. He, had, he was looping all that shit, you know, or doing what he was doing with the records. Uh, okay. You so know, manipulating it. You, you know, that's what that's what made it sound different at that time because, I mean, him still to this day, um, it, it made him, it gave him his signature sound because it wasn't guys playing. He still kept the hip hop boom. He still kept the boom back. Right, right. But he made it super angry and hardcore with hardcore heads. If you was into punk, you still could fuck with. If you was a metalhead, you was black metal, you was into that. You could still be into that shit. And he could still give you that angry, aggressive street shit with it. That's what his angle was. My shit was on, 
how my shit came, he wasn't expecting, I don't think people expected that album, really, we never did. He, I did the records, but he crafted how to put them, to sequence the shit. So I give him credit for that. That's his idea. I'm never taking that credit for that. He, right. That was his idea sequence in that record, I like that. Because right. when I heard it back, I was like, oh shit, this is something I've never heard. Right. That's the shit, man. So I realize I'm kind of glossing over shit, but... Um... You know, that kind of brings us to the LSP era, doesn't it? I mean, am I, am I missing a, so, a major major point? How did how did everything come about with that? Like you said, uh, Scum started fucking with you in the what, Faith and Chaos days. And um, yeah. so how did it come to be that you ended up uh, running off with LSP into the sunset and uh, starting MMMFD? Triple uh, MMD, yes. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, All right, well, basically... Scum hit hit. I was I was uh working with some with a, a fleet of artists at the time, and it was they my my homeboys and shout out to my boy Trey G. That's my brother right there, um, and Damn It Boy Productions. But we was all the we all, we had our own thing going on at the time. Uh, Gr- Grim Reality Entertainment. Me, JP, Trey was part of it. Uh, Cisco, um, my boy, um, uh, Cisco. Spark, Lowdown, and, uh, um, and, ah, shit, it's another, a couple other artists, too, um, but the one was, the, the, the most noticeable one was Freaks. Freaks was the one that actually kind of made everything happen with the LSP thing. Freaks, he was the, the talkative one online. Freaks had been on, I think, horcore.com or one of those dot coms, uh, I think, or you would not horrorcore, but what was a Cap's site? Uh, Kill, Kill Music. He was on killmusic.com. Shout out to Cap, because Cap was the first one that played my shit on, on the online like that. Shout out to right. Cap all, all day. Cap he was the shit, one man. I got people on it. Yeah. So he freaks was, he was fucking with Kill Music. And so I guess him and Scum had some kind of dialogue, and Scum was wanting to get insane poetry to his, his fest, festival in Denver. But my dude Freaks kept saying, no, you got to bring the whole crew. <laughs> he was trying to get the whole crew. Right. So Scum just said, fuck it. I'm just going to hit the guy up directly. So he hit me up, and me and JP went out there, and me and him started a relationship uh, uh, from that moment on. We did a song called Generation X, which, are, which was our first song, and we did it there, and people loved this fucking song. They really dig it, dug it. But at that time, when I, when I, when I uh, performed for the first time, Frankie Grudge went on before me and his mom had passed away. So a lot of people, they watched his set, you know, he dedicated to his mama. It was, it was, it was like one of the biggest shows I had been able to perform in front of or to see actually. And once he got off stage, I went on after him and I had been there for like 12 hours shaking everybody's hand. And it was like 12, maybe 15 people watching me outside of Scum's people. So it was like 30, 40 people there right. watching my set. And I'm like, I didn't care, you know? It was like, it, it didn't matter. And Scum was so happy and that I was there and what I did and I wasn't big-headed or nothing like that. I just appreciated the moment. And I, I felt so bad about, you know, the, Frankie's mom and all of that. I didn't even care, bro. It was just like, and he saw that I just didn't have an attitude. I wasn't big-headed about it or nothing. He, he thought that was cool, so he invited me out for a, a second year. The yeah. second year had like two or three hundred people watching, yeah. so it was quite different. Yeah. So, and he did a and he put he pushed that record, Grim Reality, not Grim Reality, but uh, Faith and Chaos. Right. That was his record. He was right. pushing it on those guys, but, you know, um, songs like uh, Puffin' on Angel Dust, uh, right. Diary of a Killer, and all that stuff like that. Speaking, of, I've heard Twit, you know, I, I know personally, Twisted has have shared those records. You know, you know, Jamie Madrox, especially. So I know those records have uh, actually, you know, affected some people that are that I consider at a higher higher status. Yeah. You know, which is which is all great. So, um, so yeah, so you guys started the relationship, and Scum's. Uh, I mean, Scum's one of the coolest people in this in this genre, man. To be honest with you, like, yes, I, I listen to his records, yes, and I'm like. Man, this dude is too nice for this, man. You know, he, he just got, like, he is just the coolest guy, is, is my point, man. Like, you just, you hear the record, and it's, like, two totally contrast different uh, 
animals, you know, because personalities. Uh, yes. Yeah, it, it, it's fucking hilarious to me because you know, uh, uh, you know, yeah. just sitting at the bar drinking Jaeger bombs with that bullshit, and then like you hear his record, and it's like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> this dude, this dude just killing right. shit. Right. Um, right. That's... But uh, but anyway, man. Um, so how did it come to be that you actually ended up signing with LSP and uh, and going that route? Well, I mean, you know. I'm gonna say the two biggest things that happened in my life, man, is like crazy. Is is like even I'm, I'm just gonna go back. Um, just in the days I got to perform in front of twenty thousand, doing a record that was on radio, get ready to roll on Rodney O. It was on uh, all over the radio, everywhere, pretty much box everything. It, it was cool. It was sudden something that I got to live out then. The LSP thing, I feel like Scum saved my life because I was going through different scenarios. Me and JP was running this record label. And we weren't. We had a bunch of artists that really didn't know the game. We didn't know the business side of it. So, and they really didn't know. And they really had the exact opposite of what it really was. And so, a lot of our energies we had to let them go. And then Jay and I weren't on the same. We just weren't on the same page at that time. We weren't at on the same page at that time. So he decided. I'm, it was just, it was here. You do grim reality. I'm moving forward, and that was it. Just, it was a business decision. He thought was the best decision for him, and the best decision for me. Right. Well, Scum at him and Fly. Shout out to Fly. He was really the one that had been quoting me from the first time I went, like five years prior, out there to do that particular show. What I was talking about. Right. Um, Scum had flew. He had brought me out every year since then. To that show, and which is now Gorefest, and pretty much Fly had recruited me that night. One and said, "You should be on LSP." And at the time, because I, you know, coming from uh, uh, Nasty Mix Records and all those different, the West Coast had me train a different thought process about shit. So yeah. I had to break that culture and thought, you know, break that down to actually see what he what he was saying. And at the time, Scum wasn't as stable even then. Yeah. So five years later, the opportunity sounded a lot better. Scum had different supporters involved, and it was more it was more greed upon as it would be beneficial to bring Psycho on, bring IP on. And so, and that's that's when it happened. 2010, December 2010 was the was the day my second career happened. 2010. That's that's crazy, man. Time flies, bro. <laughs> like it's it's you, yeah. just, you just get lost in that shit. But um, that's crazy, man. Um, so you did how many albums have you put out on LSP now? Uh, not including okay. Let's LSP. start. Creative Destruction is a is a mixtape. Violent Art is a EP. Is a is, is an EP with a just more tour songs. Um, the best of Insane Poetry has a, a myriad of different songs throughout the history. Um, and we have, I would say, Snuff Reels. Which is really the, the the latest one last year came out. That's right. it's one of my favorite records actually. It's yeah. one of my favorite. The mood of the record, even the start of the record, we are not the same. Pretty much tells tells you where I'm at right now in in the in the game, far as musically or in the, in the in the horrorcore lane or whatever they call that. Uh, that song sets that record off pretty much to me. I really love that record. But that's those records solo, and then I have actually three records under the triple MFD. Um, Random Acts of Violence with Scum, uh, Unsubs two years ago, uh, and this current record, The Butcher Brothers. And that's all. And then one. Uh, oh my bad. Uh, my oh. bad. One record with uh, JP the Hustler actually. Shout out to JP who just dropped his new album, The Return of the Mad Scientist. Our record, Team Guillotine. We just dropped our first record of that record also. So it's like, uh, what is that? Like forty records you just named off in the last eight years. <laughs> <laughs> like holy uh, shit, bro! Like you've been busy. Yeah, you know what though? As I was saying before, I was an alcoholic, bro. So I've been with the label for a long time, and, and they put up with a lot, you know, of my shenanigans. Yeah. And, you know, I had to stop that shit 16 months ago, bro. Yeah. It was like it got to the point to where it just wasn't, it, you know, 
you don't want to leave legacies back there. Oh, that was that. That was that guy. Right. And and I realized how much time and, pro- and not being productive that that cost me. So now I'm so productive that it just like is really to to get me out of this state is I don't think anybody can because life and everything's taught me. I've made a lot of sacrifices. You you should go in 100. You got the life is given you or offered you another opportunity. This scum has put you in these opportunistic uh, parts. Me being here tonight with you on Magic Ninja Entertainment, being a, being able to go on that twisted tour, to see it from that angle, to be able to rock on that magnitude. Me and him talked about this two years ago during our, our butcher, bro, not our doing our unsubs run. Like, right. dude, we're blowing people's ears and minds and and visuals even at this stage. Right. And people don't even know who the fuck we are. Not the ones that came to see us, the people who didn't know who we are. And they saw us because they saw the energy in it. I feel like it's punk rock to a different level. You yeah. know, like, yeah. and so every, it, we, I knew if we had that opportunity to, to expose that to a, a bigger audience, it's what happened. It's what happened. We were very successful about, with this tour. And thanks to Magic Ninja yeah. and Scum for working that out. You know, that's, hey, man, that, I, I owe Scum my second career. That's the Russian. Right, right. <laughs> the Russian. You know, straight right. up. For sure. So, um, you've got a lot of shit coming up. And uh, we're going to talk about that in the, in the next uh, the next half. I think what we should do now on that note is take a little break. That way you got to take a leak or something. You can go do that. Uh, we're going to play. You gave, me, you gave me two more videos to play. I'm going to spin those real quick. And we'll come back. We'll talk about what you got coming up and the future of Insane Poetry. And, uh, yeah, we'll just keep it moving, man. Uh, we got we got another we – got, we, got, we got time. We can, we can keep kicking it, you know. Uh, there's, there's, there's so much to talk about, man. You Like, you just yeah, – man, there's just so much history. I mean, we couldn't even – really cover it all in, 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 in two oh, hours man, i know i was like i was thinking i totally forgot about this other shit man i'm like i i, I really look back and i'm like fuck i did a 20 a, a twenty thousand seater and these people knew the fucking record man it was that was f- crazy i don't think i'd ever get to that level ever again to see that shit so i always got that under my belt but i remember doing carl's tavern shout out to my man davis bird at carl's tavern dude it was like all packed in it was turned up it was three in the morning we all on the fucking bar counter killing it and man i can't even give up it was just so fucking dope man so that's the i think that was another the energy i got from doing 20 thou was kind of like the same energy i got from doing that little intimate thing man it's like it was just crazy bro crazy it was just that fucking lie and i've had the greatest experiences doing this music shit and being able to to get to get out, you know, out and at this stage in my life, and then shout out, like I said, back to the Russian. Shout out to Scum, you know. Shout out to uh, Lynch too, man. The right hand of the king. That's what we call it, man. We try to take over Westeros. This is right. LSP. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing. Are you doing For a real. damn good job, man? I mean, realistically, nobody's fucking with it, you know. It's, it's real talk. Well, you know, we, hey, hey, you know, some people don't like it, man. You know, and they have negative things to say, but you know, that doesn't stop what we do. Grind, man, grind. All right, man. Well, look, I'm gonna play these tracks and uh, if, hang tight. You, you won't be able to. Um, your mic. Yeah, I'm mic. gonna go. I'm gonna do. You know, do that, and uh, I'll come back. I can. I, I, you know, just bring me back on when you need to. Okay. All right, man. We'll talk to you in a minute. And we're back on Wicked 101, and uh, I believe, I believe we still got my man Psycho in the building. Let's see here. What up, man? Uh, and we're back, man. Uh, so let's talk about the future, man. We've uh, we've talked about the past and then some. So uh, I also open up the phone lines in case anybody wants to call in, kick it with us. The number seven three four four three zero zero five four nine. And um, yeah, man, it's just, it's just getting real. So uh, if you want to call in, you got yes, some sir. questions for Psycho. Uh, you just want to kick it with us for a couple minutes. Uh, you know, hit us up. So, um, so up? you've got, uh, you got some cool shit coming up, man. Uh, you're getting ready to go out on tour with, um, the, the Magic Ninja homies, right? Yes, sir. You want to uh, talk you know, about, I got, uh, I got the ad for that. Uh, family. you give me one second here? I got the ad for that. Um, uh, oop, uh, give me one second, sir. One second. Fuck. 
trying to do too much shit at once. You know? Uh, let's see here. Here we go. Axis Family Tour. Uh, that's going to have... You're still... Uh, your mic is still on. Um, Axis Family Tour 2019. Axe, A&B, MMF, MMMFD. Yes, what can sir. you tell us, man? It, it, when, when does this start? I don't, I don't think they've released any dates yet. Well, what's going on? We don't have any dates listed yet. Uh, Scum is actually the one uh, booking this. Is um, with obviously uh, the Axis represented in all forms in all three groups differently. Uh, AMB Axe Murder Boys, obviously AXC Ala Zui Lou. Shout out to all those those brothers right there. Young Wicked Bones. Lee Carver, Joe Black, Billy Obey, and we have our own circle saw and axe. We got our own thing. It's only natural that that came together as uh, the Axis family. They just dropped a new video. Uh, y'all should check that out too. If you uh, definitely, so um, it's good to uh, have that going on, man. They represent hardcore like the right way. Um, they actually is like it took time. Like I've always liked the lyrical essence of it, and they brought. Magic Ninja found it found a way to bring that to the forefront of this, you know, the modern era of this underground hip hop, and I'm so glad they, you know, they the acts is that representative of that, and I get to rock with them like that too. So that's that's so dope. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, when do you think that's gonna kick off? I know you got a date chat, but I, 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 I could say, bro, um, you know, um second week of february not not you know i wouldn't say too much longer than that okay sweet i'm not you know, um that's definitely uh something that scum is you know diligently working on for real but uh, shout out to him and he's they're at bury the living tonight shout out to him and damien and, and ouija mac and all them out there doing their thing they, they're having a good you know they're doing their thing out there so I, I just want everybody to be safe, have a good time, and all that stuff like that. But uh, he's orchestrating all this stuff, so I had to give a shout out to everybody that's working out there tonight. A lot, a lot of people, a lot of different people. Uh, four or five records, uh, DRP, they all working. Everybody working. It's like underground is busy, buzzing right now. Yeah, I asked Scum. I was like, Scum, man, you should call in. And he's like, Man, I'm, I got, I got my own shit going on, you know. So uh, he's like, I'll try, but you know, everybody's working. Everybody's busy, man. Shit. But uh, that Axis yeah. Family Tour is going to be really dope, man. I'm going I'm to have to check that one out. If you're coming through, the, uh, through Michigan, I'm sure you are, too. Uh, I, I, I think we are. I, I, I think we are. I'm, I'm sure of that. I know we're coming through, through Michigan. Okay. Yeah, I, I, man, not, not to get off topic, but, man, I seen Axe killing it last night at Twistmas, and uh, them, bo- them boys are something else. I caught else. a little bit of video. Yeah, them boys are I, something I else. I caught a little bit of video, too, yeah. So that that'll be that'll be super dope. Uh, what else you got going on, man? You uh, you got some new shit you're working on with uh, Triple M F D, yeah. or are you uh, you doing insane poetry? Like, what's next? All the, all the above. Okay, right now, uh, far as Triple M F D, we're doing an extended EP, a couple of different songs, actually, you know, uh, to include with the B- Butcher Brothers for this upcoming tour. Uh, he's he's gonna he's gonna add a song. I'm gonna add a song. We're gonna we got already two or three songs done right now that are just they we wanted to put them on this album, but it's like, well, it's good because they're fucking hot anyway. So we'll put them on this little this this little EP going along with 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 the tour and everything to help promote the Butcher Brother album even more. So I got that going on. I got a solo thing I'm going on called uh, Wicked Calligraphy. It's actually Violent Art Part Two. Um, actually, it's going to be a, a 10 song album. Now, it won't be like six or nine. It's going to be a 10 song album. So, and uh, that is grimy as fuck because <laughs> my song Crawl Space Part 2 already is animal as fuck. I'm really loving the direction this record is going. The Wicked Calligraphy is all through my, you know, you can see the, the book that's pretty much Edgar Allan Poe-ish with my, own, my little twist to it. You know, and uh, I feel like I found my little energy ball for solo records. And uh, that's what that's what I'm doing for me. And then um, actually I've got team guillotine. So I'm working on another project with uh, with JP, the hustler. So we got we're trying to push, get this team gear thing. Team guillotine gives me more of a I can be super lyrical on that. I just I, I, I don't really adhere to I have to be so to the left 
for I, just, I could just get really cerebral with it. So I, I definitely like the team guillotine shit also. So I'll be we're working on some upcoming stuff like that right now. And he's got don't forget, he's got a new record out right now. Um, uh, Return of the Mad Scientist just dropped. Be sure to check that out. I, I dig the song. My music on that loop of fame remix is, is my shit It's hip hop to the fullest. Very dope. And he really is just keeping it 100 in it, too. Shout out to JP. For sure. Yes. Now, the uh, all these records that we're talking about tonight, um, we, we, we can get them at Gorehop, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Gorehopshop.com. Look, we got a caller, man. Let's uh, let's see what's going on. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Josh from Bakersfield. Oh, Josh. Hey, what's up, man? Let's go. What's going on? Josh, Billy. Sir. What's 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 shaking now? You watching the show? I, I, you're in Vegas, aren't you? I am not. I am uh, just ran right up to my room in Vegas just to uh, call in. Say what's up, Drew. Uh, what that, up, Josh? What is going on, bros? That's the shit. Long time supporter of both of us, uh, Josh Philly. Yes. <laughs> so what? Josh Philly, baby. So so what do you what do you want to talk about, Josh? There's got to be uh, something on your mind. I know you, you haven't seen the show because you out you out uh, stacking them chips, but uh, what uh, what's going on? I mean, Steve, uh, Steve <laughs> sorry, brother. Um, there's not much to say, but uh, just a shout out to Drew. Just say, man, you got you just killing it out there in Denver right now, brother. Just killing it. Thank That's M M M S E, and that new album. I can't even ride your new car bro. now, brother. <laughs> just say you killed it. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother, man. Hey. Hey, no, hey, it was a no alcohol diet, bro. It was like real shit. It was all organic, bro. It was like once I stopped I, drinking, all the creative shit started happening. That's how, you know, the Butcher Brothers, the energy from that, for me, for me and Scum, man, it was like I just was in a zone. He was in a zone. It was, it, it worked really together. I, we knew, we knew after we did the second song, which was Death on a Meat Hook, we knew after that we had a good record already. It was crazy. Death and it took a year to make the record. Was- Pretty much that that uh, like the killer killer uh, song from that, but the um the production from the whole album to me is what did it. Like you guys, I, I don't know. There there was something special about. Uh, I don't even know what you guys changed up besides you know you guys got met Bad Mind back on the uh, the production on it, but uh, t- there was just something that clicked. Something special, special about this album. That um, to me, I mean, not saying anything bad about the the first two albums, but that third album was something else, man. It, it, it just sounded like something clicked, Drew. Something clicked. Right, yeah, I, I fully agree with you, bro. I fully agree with you, bro. Um, you know, and and coming from the the, the standpoint where we were at the nucleus of it. It, I knew it, man. It just I could feel something different with the record. I could feel something different. The 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 production we chose, the the people we used for production, they were on top notch shit. Bad Mind was on his game, bro. I'm like, he had better totally. shit that he gave away <laughs> that he had, you know, he had gave to other, you know, obviously AXE. Yeah, you know, he had fire shit. Period. You know, so it was it was good to be able to get the the, the few we got, but the ones he gave us, man, like they was just energy to the pot. And that's what I felt like our shit was like, that and that energy that I, I I'm like, dude, this is like the music is presentable, at the same time, and very it, controlled it progression. Uh, right? It's it's, 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 it's it, a really, it really good record. Was I really, I mean, even from the production level, just even that. Well, I mean, I just, just production grabbed what you guys were writing. There was something special there. I just say it, it just seemed to like mesh very well. Because, I mean, not saying anything bad on the, the past two albums, but it just seemed like there was something extra there. You know, like, uh, I, I didn't even know what to call it. Like, just, uh, there's there's better just production. a little bit extra yeah. spice it's no, on there, it's not, it's, not, it's no hate, bro. It's better production. I mean, <laughs> that's what I've been trying to tell people for the longest, man. Well, coming from will... the West Coast, <laughs> yeah, we're used to it. Like, we're used to that type of shit. So it's like, when yeah. you're coming and people are making music off of off of you know back in the day they didn't have a way to know how to make their music stand out or i don't know man it was just like a lot of dudes was doing shit at home and i just felt like i wasn't getting what what i've been itching to get and finally 
you know, from snuff reels, actually from snuff reels to, you know, obviously Shutter actually. King shit, but snuff reels to me, the new shit and that, that production up until the Butcher Brothers is like, that's the production I've been wanting to rap over for the longest. Actually, you know, brother, to, uh, to go back a little bit, um, snuff reels, you, you had done told me at one point, uh, you know, the version you had done with, uh, Sutter Kane, you said, man, this is some of the hardest stuff you had ever done at one point, right? And uh, yeah, it was. So you... Say again? Yeah, it was at that oh, time, uh, yeah. So what I was saying, the, the stuff that you had done at one point, and then you went and redid and re-released, really hard, really awesome. Awesome album, right? So yeah. why did you feel that you needed to redo that album, though, man? I initially wanted to do a hip hop version of it regardless even right after we finished that record I wanted to do a hip hop version of it and because I knew first of all there was going to be certain people that liked me that wasn't going to feel that style of music so I right. wanted to have a version right. that they could respect because I, I, like I said I, I I was searching for that angle. I've been searching for that angle for all my whole career till I just said, fuck it, I'm stop. I'm just gonna write and do what the fuck I like to do. And if you fuck with me, you fuck with me. That's when I started feeling like people started fucking with me when I stopped giving a fuck about what everybody else thought I should do. I mean, that's, you know. I, I think that, that's that, why the that's, records sound that, the way they sound. That's, you got, to, you got to do that. You know what I mean? You got to stop. You can't, you can't worry about everybody else because you'll, you'll never make a record. You, you know, you nah. just, you'd be, you'd be... you you'll make a record, but you might re you might make something that you regret making. It's like, damn, I, I, you know, I'm sure there's the it, every artist has records they're like, God damn, I did I really make that shit? You know, you 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 have those records. You know, it's just you do. Those are supposed to be left on a cutting room room floor, but you know, because we 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 admire our shit so much that we're not good critics of our shit. Or we're over criticize our shit. So it's either you know, it's finding being an artist is really trying to find a the middle ground. I guess a good a good middle ground, a good balance, man. Mace Windu. You, you know, definitely purple, agree. Uh, you found too. that middle ground between those two albums because uh, you pretty much did a remix of that first album, and both albums are hard as shit, and they're awesome, man, too. Definitely awesome. <laughs> Drew's got that so voice just, that just cuts through the mix, man. Like it, it just has that. Uh, totally. There, there's this element that it just cuts through and like splits your face open. I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. Hey, like it's, just, it's ruthless, ruthless. Both albums. There's, there's nobody. Right, that well, I appreciate, it, but uh, you know, I give all credit. I give credit to Sutter Kane, bro. He, he actually, the idealism, because well, we, you know, he, we put the records when we did the first one in 2008. He his record his idea for the records was crafted by him the sequence of that album that was his 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 idealism he 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 came from the standpoint of the record had like a guy confessing his sins you know and and I was kind of like doing that shit in the record if you hear the personality in the records because the re some of the records I I did in there I was I mean it was just a lot of real shit being spoken in that and that that album but. That's totally it, that true too. I, I felt that, that he, like, um, he provided he from the a canvas, concept, and you it, definitely his painted concept all over was different it. From my, because, my uh, concept, my concept was more different. My concept was uh, on the newer one was like I wanted to do a hip hop version, but I was already in a different character. I was like, okay, that's his shit. I'm I've created this character that uh, that the excerpts, the movie excerpts came from, was a, a real person, and it's like I'm like, all right. If I'm gonna do this 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 album, and it's gonna be a make of this first record, I can't. It has to be my own vision of it. So that's why some of the 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 movie clips or something like that, they were very they were graphic as fuck, you know. So they fit the turn. They they fit the record. It was really I was just placing the songs in there because I thought the production brought out. The and they, they definitely the, they uh, they complimented every song too because it was a, a song or after like every interlude came within like two songs or so, and uh, yeah. they killed it. <laughs> they really killed it, Drew. <laughs> yeah, it was well, different. It was I don't different. even know how to compliment you even more on that album because that album was awesome, man. Um, 
Well, the other question I, I may have is, uh, what's next, brother? I mean, you just you just put out Butcher Brothers with uh, Scum, and that album was, like I said, like I just said, I came on tops. That album was killer. We we were just talking we're about what's next. next. You should you should have been tuned in, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, we just we spoke about I'm we not, spoke I, about that, brother. Yeah, Drew, but, I'm but Vegas, it, brother. to keep it to you keep it real, though, Vegas, Josh, man, I, a, I'm working on a lot of things, bro. <laughs> I mean, I'll be you'll be seeing singles dropping. Um, Crawl Space Two with with Scum. He's gonna he's gonna make an appearance on this record. Um, I just I gave know. a little sample of it. I'm gonna do it again because I want to make sure the speakers are set up so yeah, people can hear the sonics of that record when you hear it the right way it, it's really dope um i'm about to probably in in two days i'm doing a shout out to carnival spirits i got a i got a a, a, a verse with him shout out to my dudes riffic riffic dojo down there in houston i'm doing a collab with him we we all working and stuff like that so it's like i'm in here well, I know it never as stopped. long as i'm never in a studio i'm working i'm working on something I mix, I master, and I work. I continue to work. I'll be in here with Hex yeah, tomorrow. My boy. So, yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> continu- I'm continually work. Well, yes, sir. Shit, man. Yes, sir. Well, Josh, man, thank you so much for calling in. I uh, appreciate it. Yes, you, hey, you, bro, shout out. You, he's, he's, been, uh, he's been a longtime supporter of both of us, man, so uh, I, pre- I appreciate that, man. But uh, we're going to we're gonna I'll see you sooner later, rather than later. And uh, Steve, brother, I love you. I love you too, man. Thank right. you. See you, brother. Yeah, love you too, bro. Hey, no doubt. Go make some money, bro. Right. Go get that bread. <laughs> you know it, man. Hey. And then, and then you know it, with... man. You see me down here. And then, For real. Love you. Then split it yes, with us. Night, guys. All right, peace. Yep. All right, bro. Well, that was the shit. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, Josh is, Josh is cool as fuck, man. So, um, Josh is cool as fuck. Yeah, he, he's. He, I know he's been a longtime supporter of both of us, uh, so that, that's really cool that he called in, man. Um, so what else? Uh... I, remember, I drove to his house. I remember I drove to his house one time. He was in Bakersfield. My uh, my one of my dudes that was in our in our group at the time, uh, uh, Spark. He's my cousin actually. I was going up to his house and I go and 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 he lives out there in Bakersfield. So he came to the house and I spit one of the songs, a cappella. It was uh it was um 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 uh sacred geometry that's the name of the joint sacred geometry i spit it to him live and he always thought that was dope shit so it was one of he was all he's been a supporter him and ben stockwell oh, shout out sure. to ben too for sure yeah a lot of good people out there man a lot of good people those out names there. are synonymous with horrorcore.com and uh, you know uh yeah and yeah. just all that shit back in the day because they've been around that long you know yeah we need fans like that man we need we need a lot of them i yeah, no, no, no real shit Cause you know, hey, you know, the the game the game is changing on everybody, bro. And it's like, it's it, you know, I'm just our mission at LSP is to unite the underground I, I, by any means necessary, you know. So we're you know sacrificing certain avenues or certain um, levels of it. We know what content is comes with LSP's music, you know. We know that some of the stuff that people are going to associate that with, and they're going to be defensive on it. And so what? You know, it is what it is, man. You know, the, the bottom line is we represent the underground and the freedom to be able to do it. So, and that's what's up right there. And, and the shows like Such As Yourself gives us an opportunity to even, you know, get it to higher platforms. So shout out to, you know, to Magic Ninja for even, a, you know, having you have a, being able to have a show and having having a guy like me on it. You know what I mean? Look, so man. I really appreciate it. Look, look, man, George, George, George hit me up about doing this, and uh, he, I was like, you know, if I do it, I, I don't, I don't want it to be, you know, all Magic Ninja all day. I want to, I want to, I want to represent the underground and, and show off some talent that maybe people haven't seen yet, you know, and, and still bring in Magic Ninja, and, you know, just I want to, I want to, I'm gonna show love to everybody that's killing it out here, and you're killing it out here right. more than anybody uh, uh, that I can name, you know, just as much as anybody. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to give you some shine time, man. And, and like I said, George was like, no, nah, man, you know, we, we want you to do your show the way you want to do it. So, um, yeah, so, so I- yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. You know, and, and, and you know what, bro, even though this is a short amount of time, you know, we're trying to get a story together you, you, to autobiography or to, to biographize right. my career and lifestyle and right. life at this shit. You know, I, obviously I've been doing it for quite a long time. Um, but you don't have the opportunity to do it on here it, to this to this level is is really cool though. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna even front, man. But like I said, man, I'm just keep 
I, I keep my my mind moving forward, and I'll let it, 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 and, and the gems just keep dropping, and right. people appreciate it till it's till the wall tells me you can't do it no more. Right now, I can keep doing it, so I'm gonna keep working. You know what I mean? It's it's just something that is allowing me way more opportunities. That's bringing in a lot more different uh, other opportunities. That's you know. It's bringing a bringing up the respect too, so I, I, I it's it's all good right now. So look, man, I got I got I got to uh, before we before we sign off here, I got to announce uh, my next show, uh, my next guest. Okay. You, you give me a minute to do that okay. real quick. Uh, it's a big one, so I'm gonna take you off the screen for a second, and uh, I'm gonna bring okay. it in, show everybody what's going on. This month, all right. we got my homie Anybody Killer. Coming to Wicked 101, he's actually going to be in the abandoned Dude. school, uh, not live via Skype. He's going to actually be sitting right next to, the, to this motherfucker right here in the school. And uh, we're going to dive into his history. We're going to talk about the tour he's got coming up. And uh, it's going to be super fucking fresh, man. So uh, look out for that. It's only a couple weeks away. Um, Psycho, I'm going to bring you back. Um, uh-huh. So, yeah, that's. I just wanted to, I, to I just wanted to plug that real quick. Shout out to Killer. Killer's the man, dude. Hey, I thought it might get him I, I the like, Bud Light. Hey, before we get on, I just want to, I just want to shout out my squad, all the L's up. I'm gonna start with my peoples. I gotta get him the love because they, if do. it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be, you know, being able to do what I'm doing right now. I gotta get, give it up to my big brother Lynch. Shout out to Lynch. Shout out to Fiasco. Shout out to Fly. Uh, the big, the Gore, the Gore himself, Scum, Damian Quinn, Smalls One. Black Widow, Hex Rated. Check out Hex Rated's new album, Rotten. Just dropped, you know, very good album. A lot of good records came out this year. Hex dropped a really good album. JP the Hustlers, new album is out right now. Return of the Mad, uh, Mad Scientist, Razor, D4T. They're working on an album right now. True Killer and, and, and uh, Fiasco. They're working on some new projects. Shout out to Bori. You know, you know about the Triple MFD scenario on Team Guillotine. We got Black Christmas coming up. Here this weekend, this coming up weekend, uh, Black Christmas. So everybody coming out, definitely be safe. Come get you, you know, come fuck with us early. Uh, Defect was telling you about the tour we got coming up with Axe Murder Boys and um, um, AXC Alazui Lu with us, uh, the Axis Family Tour, uh, sponsored by L- uh, Magic Ninja Entertainment. LSP is involved in it. To you know, you see how we're doing it. We're we're working with that that scenario. We're we're, we're very happy to be in in the scenario to be to be visual to some people right now. So it's 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 very hard for some of the guys out here that's been doing this for a long time to understand. I'm gonna tell you right now. Stop trying to entertain other rappers and do it for your fans because right. the rappers aren't buying shit. And make it for, make, and make it for yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, you got, you got too many rappers care about what the next rapper is saying, man. And I really don't give two fucks if I, you like me or not, how much I'm doing, what I'm doing. If your numbers are bigger than mine or smaller than mine, all that shit equates to me is what you, what I can charge or what you can charge net worth anyway and all that. And if you're not about the science of that part of the game, you know, it's it's a hobby for you. Uh, what we're doing is really doing it, and that's and that's why I feel like some artists hate because they want to do that, and then when you give them a little taste of it, they don't have the intestinal fortitude to deal with the shit because this shit is real. <laughs> it's yeah. really not. It, it, it is. It really takes a different kind of animal to do this shit. It's a you know me me and Scum talked about that a little bit when he was on the show. Uh, just that that step away from uh, you know having a day job and, and just doing it full time all day every day, you know that that grind and uh, and it becomes less of a well I'll get to that when I when I when I get to it too. I need to go make a motherfucking record, you know. Uh, we kind of right, talked right. about you that. You can't get to it when you get to it. You got to consistently be doing this shit. It's really hard to. To you know, the game has changed so much. You have to be so visual now, and you have to have so much. The music is actually is playing like last place because you have to do so many other things to keep people interested. I mean, the difference with our label than other labels is that we're a market that have have our fans, and we're able to tour. You know, a lot of people focus in on the music more, and we focus in on the presentation with the music 
and the delivery and the performance it's all in one package it's right. not just saying oh i'm trying to be the dopest lyricist but yeah you can be the dopest lyricist and don't have a really good shirt or don't have a really good presence or don't really know how to rock the mic and you yeah. just expect people to jock you that's a different we're not that label that's going to be able to give you the budget to say we're going to work your song and it's just going to be hot and you can sit at home and do all that that's not really how it works out here we don't have that kind of uh, budget to push those kind of artists. What we will do is push artists that are really trying to get out here and doing it like we are. We on the fucking grit. That's the real shit. We trying right. to take over Westeros, my nigga. For real. <laughs> Westeros. For real. I, I feel you. I feel you, man. I feel you. And you guys are out here doing it, man. So uh, much love for that. And look, man, thank you for doing this, man. I, I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. And, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I know I know it was two hours you, of your night. Uh, but uh, I can't wait to see what, uh, what comes next for Insane Poetry, man. So uh, with that, yes. man, uh, you got anything else you wanna you wanna say before we sign off? Man, no, no everything. Shout out to the so shout out to the underground scene. That's all I want to say. Shout out to the motherfucking underground scene. No matter which way you come from, Juggalos who accepted me for a long time ago. I got some real 17 percenters that are real fuck with me really hard. I, I fuck with a lot of people that fuck with this music on the underground because they love the level of it. Not a, it's it's a it's a different kind of format and energy that people can love it. And, and, and that don't know each other can vibe one off of music and have a good time and stuff like that and really have and really just get together man i wish that still could be the same scenario now but we know we got to keep pushing the agenda i'm in it not to i don't care about being the top breed art I, i'll never i'm not it's not that's i guess that's never been the case i'm just here to to make sure the underground that's why i'm glad axe is on here because they making fools get with the lit you gotta you can't just Step say some up. horror course you know, or some horror rap and people are supposed to say you dope because you're doing it no you better put some bars together you, right, yeah, right. You make that shit dope so yeah. it's like i'm glad that kind of hip-hop is is landed in this background right now so and and it, 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 yeah i'm just i'm shout out to everybody doing this shit for real and shout out to all the supporters out there that supporting our establishments all across e each brand that's all I, and every all of all the brothers that's struggling out there i still i'm still seeing y'all fuck with me that's what i'm saying fuck with me. all right man well with that again thank you so much man i'm gonna play one more track to sign us out here uh it's, yes, been, it's been an honor man so uh keep grinding man i'm watching yes sir so bro, uh, take care bro, bro peace out so with that, man. Peace out. Shout out to you, Donnie. Chucky Chuck. D-Gal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good night, y'all. Uh, this is uh, Mark for Death featuring Axe Murder Boys. <laughs>